again, that's Luke chapter 8, verses 19 through 21, and it reads, And his mother and brothers came to him, and they were unable to get to him because of the crowd. And it was reported to him, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside wishing to see you. But he answered and said to them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Our message this morning, church, is how you can get closer to Jesus. How you can get closer to Jesus. You may be seated. Ushers, you are relieved. You know, last week we talked about how to process the Word of God, and, and in the process of doing that, we realized that you have to elevate it. You can't hide it. You, 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 it's, it's, it's fully revealed, and, and as a result of elevating the words of God and not hiding it, those who receive it for what it's worth get richer, and those who hear it but don't elevate it, thus not receiving it, get poorer. But there's additional steps involved when we're talking about the Word of God. You see, I don't know about you, but my goal as a Christian, my goal as a believer in Jesus Christ is to get closer to Jesus. My goal is to know Him better and to have even a better relationship with him today than I had with him yesterday Amen. and to have even a better relationship with him tomorrow than I have with him today. So as far as I'm concerned, it's all about getting closer to Jesus. Anybody want to get closer to Jesus? Yes, if you amen. want to get closer to Jesus, say, I, I want to get close, to, get close, close to, him. to him. Amen, I do too. You ain't the only one. So this is about getting closer to Jesus. And, 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 and we understand that when we process his word, when we understand what his word is trying to say to us, we can use obedience to his word to increase our relationship with him. So we've got Jesus, he's, he's still, now, now walk with me if you will, you got to get into the spirit. He's still talking to the assembly. Right. He's still talking right. to the multitude. Right. He's still talking to his disciples. He's still talking to the apostles. Right. There's a lot of people gathered around while Jesus is doing the talking. And while Jesus is telling them that, hey, when you get the word of God, don't hide it. Don't put it on your bed. Don't put it on the lampstand. He said, when you get the word of God, not only must you process it, but you've got to be obedient to it. So, 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 what's the point of me processing the word of God but not adhering to what it has to say? So if we look at the text today, you got Jesus in the assembly of all these people, and guess what? It says here, his mother and brothers came to him, and they were unable to get to him. Now, Jesus is in the midst of some serious conversation. All right. You ever been in the midst of serious conversation? Yeah. And somebody wants to come and talk to you? Yeah. If you've been in corporate America, you, you, you've been on the phone before in your office, and you're in the midst of serious conversation, you're on a conference call, and somebody knocks on the door, they got something they want to tell you. They are interrupting what it is you got to say. Oh, right. so, 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 so Jesus, mother and brothers, is looking for him. Yeah. Now, 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 there's a relationship when we talk about mothers and brothers. All right. You got two different kinds of relationships. You got motherly relationships and you got brotherly relationships. Right. But Jesus is busy about doing what he came to do. He's in the process of teaching right now. He's in the process of preaching right now. Right. Along comes mama and my brothers. And, 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 and now, now, now you got to understand who these people are and have an appreciation for what's happening here today. You've got Mary 
You anybody remember Mary? All right. Don't act like you don't know Mary because Mary was the one whom the Holy Spirit impregnated miraculously to give birth to the Savior. All right. So you got Mary. There are people out there, as wrong as it may be, that worships Mary. Right. So let's not put Mary down now like she ain't nobody. She ain't, with regards to our salvation, she doesn't factor. But with regards to being still the earthly mother of Christ, it's still his mama. Yeah. If you don't want to be talking about your mama, you sure can't talk about his mama. All right. All right. Amen. Amen? So instead, you got Jesus' mama. And not only do you have his mama, but you got his brothers. And when I say you got his brothers, walk with me now. The, 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 these are not full-blooded brothers. Because see, Jesus' daddy was God the Father through the vessel of the Holy Spirit. But after Jesus was born, after the uh, virgin gave birth to Jesus Christ, she wasn't a virgin no more after that because she started getting with Joseph. And they had several other boys and girls. Right. So you got these other boys, Jesus' brothers, and I can imagine that James was that. Yeah. You remember James? Yeah. Come on, you know James. Yeah. Consider it all joy, yeah. James. Uh -huh. Act like you don't know James. Yeah. That the testing of your faith, that's the first thing you want to quote when you're going through some ups and downs. You quote James. That's Jesus' half brother. Right. They're looking for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So James went at the point of faith then as he is now, but he was still looking for Jesus. So I'm wondering when I'm reading the text, I'm like, why are they looking for him? The, the text doesn't tell us, but we can make some, some, some observations here. Jesus is at the pinnacle of his ministry. He's out doing things. He's healing folk. So first of all, mama is like, I need to get to my son. Everything that I knew was going to happen is happening. I want to get to my son. I want to talk to him. I want to let him know I love him. You know how mamas are. All right. They don't want to let go. I, but I, until this day, and I love her with all my heart, Mama Lot going to call me at least every other day. How you doing? Things will be going great. How you doing? Things will be going bad. How you doing? Things will just be going. How you doing? She just want to hide it. So I can see Mary like, my son is doing his thing. My son is doing what God called him to do. But I still want to get to my son. I hear he's out there teaching to all these people. I hear he's talking about that you got to lift up the word. I hear he's talking, but I just want to see my son. I don't care about these people pushing in on them. I don't care about all those other people that either up to no good or is either up to good. I don't care at the end of the day. He may be the son of God. At the end of the day, he's still my boy. Don't you think that wasn't going through her mind? So you got Mary trying to see her son. And now you got these other boys, these half brothers. Now, 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 what, what, what's their motivation? Why do they want to get to Jesus? Now, wait a minute. Now, they, 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 you know our brothers are. They, you, you, you got two kinds of brothers. You got brothers who are on your side, and you got brothers that are against you. So, 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 wait a minute. Now, why, why they have to? We know James was on his side because he wrote the book of James. He had to get to that point. But at this point, I can imagine that these other brothers have multiple issues for wanting to see Christ. Right. They, they may be good, they may be bad. I can see them right now. Man, uh, he talked about he all pure and everything. Man, how is it that every time we hang it out as brothers, he the only one that don't curse. He the only one that won't steal nothing. He the only one. Why? He a little goody two shoes. You know what? They may have been just tagging on mama's heels, acting like they was interested in their big brother, trying to show in front of mama that they cared, but they really didn't care. Or they may be like, you know what? That's my brother up there. I'm going to support my brother. My brother is the one y'all listening to. My brother is the one that says he's the son of God. I'm struggling with that, but he says he is. I watch him perform miracles. Who knows? They just want to get to him to tell Jesus something. The text never tells us. We can go a hundred different ways with it. So since we don't know which way to go, we're just going to go with what the text says. Amen. We don't know. Amen. We don't know. Amen. But look at this here. Get this, get this, get this. They made their way to see Jesus. His mother, the mother relationships. His brother, the brother relationships. They came to him. They know that he was ministering. And they were unable to get to him. Regardless of whatever reason they were trying to get to Jesus, 
They couldn't get to him. Now, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with flesh and blood. We're dealing with a flesh Mary. We're dealing with a flesh brothers of Jesus. And let me tell you right now that uh, when you're dealing with Jesus, fleshly access is denied. You, you can't get to Jesus in the flesh to have a closer relationship to him if your ultimate goal is to want to get to know him better. At this stage, he ain't just big brother Jesus no more. At this stage, he's the son of God. You can't get to the son of God with flesh anymore. Your flesh past no longer works anymore. So they're, they're in the flesh. You got brothers in the flesh with fleshly desires, with fleshly attitudes trying to get to Jesus. You got mamas in the flesh with fleshly desires and fleshly acid trying they can't get there no more because fleshly access is denied. When you're trying to get to the Son of God. And, and, and we as believers today, nothing has changed. We want to get to Jesus. We've got multiple reasons for wanting to get to Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is out lifting you, which is what he does. Yeah. He is out drawing, which is what he does. He is out transforming, which is what he does. Yeah. He is out saving, that is what he does. Yeah. But yet we got those that are in the flesh still trying to get to Jesus. Lord, and they wonder why they can't get there. Yeah. They wonder why they can't get because they're in the flesh. Let me tell you why you can't get there in the flesh. If, you, if you're trying to get this closer relationship to Jesus and you're denied access because of the flesh, it says, and they were unable to get to him. Then it says, because of the crowd. See, whenever you operate in the flesh, crowds tend to detain you. See, 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 you may be thinking about multitudes of people denying you access, but in this day and time that we're living in, we got crowd noise in our head. We got naysayers and non-believers stopping us from getting to Jesus in the flesh. We're in the flesh, which is why we're being stopped from getting to Jesus. We got crowd issues of unemployment. We got crowd issues of finances. We got crowd issues of marital problems. We got crowd issues of, of, of sexual orientation. We got crowd issues stopping us from getting to Jesus because we're still trying to get to him in the flesh. And no flesh is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, so, so fleshly access is denied. And so if, if they, and I hope and pray that, 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 that somehow, some way as believers in Jesus Christ, that we come to the conclusion that since we cannot get to him, since we have been denied access, since the crowd noise have neutralized our efforts to get to God, we need to learn how to get rid of this crowd. And the problem with getting rid of the crowds in your life, the crowds of problems, the crowds of finances, the crowds of lack of faith, the crowds of unrest and unpeace in your head, is you've got to get up out of the flesh. Since fleshly access is denied, you've got to find another way to get to God. Since flesh is denied, it's, that door has been closed. Since that door has been, you know what? They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. Since flesh has been denied, then we need to open up another door. We need to look behind another curtain. We need to come up with another solution in order to get to Jesus. Because all mama wants to do is get to her son. All the brothers want to do is to get to their relative. Well, by faith in Jesus Christ, we become a part of the spiritual family of believers in Jesus Christ. Our entire desire is to just be with Jesus. We need Jesus riding shotgun with us in the car. We need Jesus typing next to us on the keyboard. We need Jesus coming in through our ear, through the speakers in the car, through the speakers at the computer desk, through the speakers in our home. We need Jesus entering us through the television screen. We need Jesus close by. That's why I love KHCB and their acronym. They call it KHCB, keeping him close by. Now, you need to define that him, but it's clear that KHCB is talking about Jesus. And so are we. We need to be able to keep him 
close by. And that should be our ultimate goal. But we've got to get past some of this crowd noise. we got to get past some of this, this crowd which is blocking our access to Jesus uh, and, and neutralizing the effectiveness of our ministry. Now get this. So, so you got the mama and the brother trying to get there to them uh, for whatever reasons. And they can't get there. But they, they're trying to reach them in the flesh. And, and, and I, I can imagine Mary saying, now how is it that I can't get to my son because he's talking to these people? How is that these people are more important than me? All right. Likewise with the brothers. We're trying to get through to see our brother. And we can't get through because of y'all. That will upset me. I'm sorry. Now, now my, my wife will tell you, and, 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 and it goes both ways. When she trying to reach me on my job, she don't care who I'm talking to. <laughs> Let her have it. Get off the phone. I don't care if you talk to the president. And acknowledge my phone call. Down deep, we all feel that way. We know we can't do that, and she knows that as well. But he's like, wait a minute. Now, I am his wife. It, now, uh, I am the one that cooked for him. I'm the one that washed his clothes. We are the one that, 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 that are parenting our child together. How is it that somebody on that job can take more time away from him than me? She's been denied access because of the crowds around me in my life. I've been denied access because the crowds of her boss, because the crowds of her co-workers, because the crowds of ministry, because the crowds of whatever. And that that will upset you if your heart ain't right. So, 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 so don't, don't be tripping on, on Mary and the brothers just yet. But they could not get that. They were in the flesh and they couldn't get to see Jesus. Some of us are struggling trying to get that. We're struggling trying to see Jesus and we don't know why we've been denied this access. We don't know why it's so hard. We don't know why we're not number one in his presence. We don't know why we're not top priority with him. We don't know why it's more important for him to talk to those others instead of talking to us. God, don't get you ain't that ain't right, Jesus. I'm your mama, boy. Bro, bro, bro. Bro, well, I ain't got nothing on you, but you got a lot on me. So here's one of them bros that I can put something on your head over. But you're still my bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Man, you just met him. What about me? We shot hoop together, man. You counsel me on some things. Let me through. You pick back up with that conversation later. But Jesus says, no. No, look, 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 look at what's going on. Look at what's going on. They, they want to get to Jesus. They've been denied. And look at verse 20. And it says... And it was reported to him. Get this. Now, somebody recognized Mary and Jesus' brothers. Now, they couldn't get to Jesus. But this somebody that recognized them was close enough to Jesus to give Jesus a heads up. They got word, get this, to Jesus. That you, 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 you ever tried to get word to Jesus? All right. They got word to Jesus as to what was going on. Mm. Now, oh. somebody say, you know what? Hey, hey, who? Man, somebody, what? Now, let Jesus keep. Don't bother. He's teaching you. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I think that's Mary. That's Jesus' mom. Remember James and Jude? No. <laughs> hey, so, oh, okay, I need to let him know. This is priority now. Because, see, when somebody see my mama, they going to say, hey, 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 pass out. Your mama out there, man. And they're expecting me to say, hey, man, roll out the red carpet. That's my mama. That's my brother. Roll out the red carpet. But they looking and they say, hey, Jesus, Jesus, your family out there. And it was reported to him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wishing to see you. They got word to Jesus. The problem with giving word to Jesus is that you're doing something that you don't have to do. You can't get word to Jesus because Jesus is omniscient. He already knows that what you're trying to tell him. You don't have to go say, Jesus, your mama outside. You don't have to say, Jesus, your brother's outside. You don't think Jesus knows his mama and brother's outside already? 
Let me tell you something. You can't inform Jesus about nothing. All you can because Jesus is the one who informs us. You can't get word to Jesus. It's Jesus' job to get the word to you, to get himself inside of you. All you got to do is receive him. So we too busy trying to inform Jesus. We don't have to inform Jesus about nothing. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. He's all powerful and all knowledgeable. But you think you're doing something by trying to inform. Let me tell you something. Jesus is the smartest of all of us. We ain't got to inform. He omnipotent. He walked down the street and he knew Zacchaeus was in the tree. Ain't nobody care. Hey, Jesus, Zacchaeus is up on that tree. Jesus was just walking and said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house today. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, your mom and your brother outside, Jesus, I'm like, and that's what I was saying. <laughs> How you going to tell Jesus, like you informing him about some, only thing you can tell Jesus is all about your problems, all about your, what's hurting you. you. You ain't informing Jesus. Jesus, guess what? It's sunny outside today. I hung the sun. <laughs> So we're trying to inform Jesus now. This is the same Jesus that caused Lazarus to come up out of the tomb. And you're trying to inform. We need to stop trying to inform Jesus and tell Jesus about our struggles, our trials, and our tribulations. And stop trying to, like we're giving Jesus some smarts. Look at it. He said, he said Jesus, your mama and your brother is outside wishing to see you. Jesus already knows. If he ain't moved on something, it ain't because he don't know. Amen. If Jesus has not allowed you access to him, it's probably because you're still trying to get to him in the flesh. And if you're in the flesh, you're no different than anybody else in the flesh. You don't need to be trying to get to him. You need to be trying to hear what he got to say in order to Amen. receive him. Amen. Amen. There's a difference. That's right. So, 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 so whatever your situation may be, rest assured that you ain't informing Jesus about nothing. You don't need to tell Jesus it's sunny outside. You don't need to tell him it's cold. All you say, Jesus, I'm hurting. I lost my job. He already knows that. But you will get a lot farther telling him about what your struggles are than giving him every information that he already Jesus next month will be September. Uh, okay. Uh, you want to talk about some sin? You want to talk about some, some, some lack of faith issues? You want to talk about some, some struggles you're having? That I can help you on. But you tell me that my family is outside, I think I got that one covered. When I'm ready to deal with that, I'll deal with that. We've got to get serious about communicating with God about that which affects us directly. That is the abolishment of the sin and disobedience in our life. we got to come to Jesus with something he can fix. Not thinking we're telling him something he don't know. So, 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 so we, we're trying to get word to God, and it's God's objective to get Jesus, the word, to us. Now, get this, get this, you get this. God already knows your situation. But look at, look at how Jesus responded to him. Resp he says, but he answered. The first thing I like to say is that he answered. No matter how your question may be posed, no matter how good a question or how bad a question it may be. God will always answer you. Now his answer may not be what you want to hear, Amen. but even his inactivity is an answer. The fact that you're outside trying to get in to see him and your access has been denied is an answer. So he can answer you any kind of way. So Jesus will always answer. So he's talking to this reporter. You know, I, I, I love reporters because reporters don't really uh, 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 care about the news they're reporting. Amen. Their only job is to expose it. Amen. So I, 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 I'm not really uh, sure how deep this, this report, that's what it was reported to him. That I'm not sure how much this reporter, this reporter was really concerned. All he wanted to do was Pass along the information. Amen. 
We got people today still just want to pass along the information. Amen. Until the information has been made to be powerful in your life, it's just that. It's information only. And you're passing useless information. It's a waste of your time and everybody else's time. But the text is telling us, it says, <clears throat> and he answered and said to them, get this, my mother and my brothers. My mother, the relationship I have with her, who loves me no matter what goes down. That's the type of relationship I got with her. My brothers, we know things about each other that nobody else knows. I nurtured them. I, I, I led them by example. They, they know things about me that y'all still don't know. My brothers, that kind of relationship. He says, my mother and my brothers are two things. Now, <clears throat> he's relating his relationship with Mary and his brothers to his spiritual relationship with others that are kingdom bound. He said, these who hear the word of God, number one, and do it. So, if you want to have access to me, because you have been denied access, you're on the outside. People have to come tell me that which I already know, that you're out there trying to get to me, but I already know that. But your desire is to get close to me. The only way you're going to get close to me is you've got to change your whole makeup. You've got to not look at your relationship with me physically. You have to look at your relationship with me spiritually. It's not about a physical relationship because I'm telling you right now, from this day forward, now that it is known that I am the Son of God, now that it is known that I am the one who rose from the dead, it, 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 he's, he's saying that if you want a relationship like I got with my mama, very close to me, you've got to get spiritual. You've got to do what my father says. There's no getting close to me until you are able to do what my father says. If you want to do what my father says, you first have to hear my father's word. So you've got to hear and obey. Or there's no closeness to me. There's no proximity to me if you don't hear the word and obey it. We've got so many people today that hear the word of God. And it's twofold. You can't do one without the other. If you go back to the book of Samuel, he says obedience is better than sacrifice. So it ain't about what you give up. It's about did you do what I say? God is telling us to get closer to the kingdom, to get closer to Jesus, accept the word, accept Jesus Christ. And if you accept the word, you accept Jesus Christ, then you have to do what it says. So if God says, train up a child, you have to accept the fact that it says that, then you got to do it. You got to train up a child. If God says, don't steal, you got to accept the fact that it says, don't steal, then you got to keep your hands in your pocket. If God says, don't give up, you got to accept the fact that he says, don't give up, and you got to persevere from some things that you're going through. If God says, I'm going to be there, you got to accept the fact that he's going to be there, and you've got to act and respond as if God is already with with you in the midst of your trials and your tribulations. Otherwise, you're hearing what you're not doing. Right. It's just like having God the Father without the Son and the Holy Spirit, you're still going to hell. It's like having the Holy Spirit and the Son and not having God the Father, you're still going to hell. You can't get to the Father unless you go through the Son. If you go through the Son to get to the Father, the Son through the Father will send you the Holy Spirit. Then you got God all in all. Nike had a commercial out years ago. These athletes would walk around and they would talk about the incredible feats that they accomplished in their sport. And then they would turn to the camera as if they were talking to you and me. And they will try to encourage you by saying whatever it is that you set out to do, three words, just do it. 
In other words, don't give me no whining. We still got spiritual whiners. Don't give me no back talk. We still got spiritual back talkers. Don't give me no long, drawn out stories. We still got spiritual storytellers. All right now. Jesus is saying, you want to get to me? I don't care if you want a relationship with me. I don't care if you're my mama. There's a spiritual motherly relationship that's better than your physical mother relationship because the physical mother relationship will cease after you die or I die. But the relationship that carries on is the eternal relationship, the spiritual relationship. If you want to be like a mother to me, if you want to be like a brother to me, if you want to be like a nurturer to me, if you want to be like an encourager to me, if you want to be in that relationship with you, the only way you want to get close to me now, forget everything you knew, hang everything on the hat rack before you walk inside the door because this is a new day. This is a new age. It ain't about our physical, fleshly connection. It's about our spiritual relationship. And if you want to get close to me, if you want to benefit from being next to me, if you want to feel the fire of Jesus Christ, if you want to be able to be raised up from the dead like I raised Lazarus off the grave, if you want to be made whole like I made all the people whole in the Bible, then you've got to let go of that fleshly relationship. You've got to hear the word of my Father. You've got to respond to the word of my Father by doing the word of my Father. And guess what? We hip buddies in. We tied at the hip. You go left, I go left. We like running a three-legged race. We put our little legs out, then we put our outer legs out. And by that, we're getting somewhere because when you fall, I lift you up. I know everybody has seen that point. Footprints. Some of us probably got it up on our bathroom walls, the walls of the hallways in our home, and it's about this person who walking, and when you look behind them, you see two footprints. So they're walking with Jesus. Their footprints and Jesus' footprints. And all of a sudden, they look behind them in the sand, and they don't see nothing but one set of footprints. And ignorantly, they question God. Be careful when you question God. It's, it's, it's kind of like informing God, as if he don't know. They look behind me like, well, wait a minute, God. You've been with me all this time. And now I'm looking back. All I see is one set of footprints. God, have you abandoned me? All right. As if I would never leave you or I would never forsake you does not apply. And then they had to wake up. God said, no. The only reason why you see one set of footprints in the sand is because you failed. You couldn't handle it. And now I'm carrying you across the finish line because of the relationship we had. Jesus will always carry us, even if it looked like we're walking side by side. Even if you see two sets of footprints, make no mistake about it, you still ride in the back of Jesus. Yeah. Show sure enough, Jesus. You think you got Jesus riding shotgun in your car? Mm -hmm. And you behind the wheel? It may look like that on the outside. That's the flesh. The spirit is Jesus, even though I'm behind the wheel, you driving this car. Mm -hmm. Jesus, even though I'm punching the clock, you performing this job. Amen. That's the kind of relationship I want with you, Jesus. Jesus, I need you to help me make some decisions in my life that if I go left or right on, will make or break me. Will either set me down a path of destruction or keep me on a path of straight and narrow. Jesus, I'm a young adult. I need you by my side on this next decision in my life. Jesus, I'm still in high school age. I need you by my side when I'm approached by some of these other people that are my age saying this is what I need to do in order to feel good when all I need is you to feel good. We have to be able 
to process the word of God and processing the word of God. I don't care. You, you, you can you can lift it. It all goes hand in hand. You can lift up the word of God, but you can't lift it up and not obey it. Because obeying the word of God is tantamount to lifting it up. And lifting it up is tantamount to obeying it. They go hand in hand. They're all locked together. That's why this comes right after the text about letting your light shine. You can't let your light shine by not obeying the word of God. And I thank God that the way he's set it up in the Bible, he says, you know what? Go out to exemplify me. Lift up my word. Don't hide it under a peck measure. Don't hide it under your bed. Don't hide it under a container. Let it shine. It will be revealed. Now, let me sum it up by saying, listen to what my father said. Just do it. Just do it. If it's right, do it. If it's wrong, don't do it. Just do right. Just do it. Spike Lee shot a movie back in the 80s. And it seemed like yesterday. And it just tells me how much time has flown. And I was watching it the other day. And I was seeing how young he was. And I look at him now. And I'm like, man, time has flown. Then you got to look into the mirror yourself. Man, back in the 80s, that we were all, we all it almost age at the same time. Like, we're getting older. But he had a movie called... Do the right thing. He was called Mookie in the movie. And one of the most important parts of the movie was when you're faced with a decision to make, do the right thing. What's the right thing? The right thing is whatever Jesus would do. Not what the movie tells you. I disagree with the movie on that front. The movie tell you, stand up for this, do this, this. No, 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 no. Doing the right thing is whatever Jesus would do in that situation. And the only way you're going to know what Jesus would do is if you are taking in Jesus consistently. If you got Jesus tied to your hip, if you got that type of proximity to Jesus, that type of closeness to Jesus, you will know how to respond in any situation. And I will say this, before you make a decision on anything you do, go to God in prayer. And let him, you know, you know, if we would just exercise the power we have, we, there isn't, I, I don't have any decisions I need to make. If I look at it that way, I'm fixing to mess up big time. And I have done that. And I acknowledge that. But I'm at the point now, Jesus, what? Do we need to do? I don't care how big. Don't just take the big things to him. Mm. That's the problem. The devil knows well, unless it's life threatening, he ain't gonna go to God. Unless it's unless it's threatening his marriage, he ain't gonna go to God. You know what, Jesus? What color should I paint this room? I mean, literally that trivial. Jesus, how much gas should I put in my car? Jesus, before I open my mouth, that's the hard one. That's the real hard one. Because it's so quick to open that. It's easy to open that mouth. Jesus, before I respond in this situation with my opinion, or just tell me what you want me to say, and we can avoid so much chaos, so much conflict, if we just be receptive to what God wants us to say in every situation. Yes, he has given each one of us an opinion. And we're human beings, we have an opinion. But our opinions sometimes need to just be kept to ourselves. Amen. Just because God has given us an opinion don't mean we need to tell everybody. Amen. <laughs> because when you tell somebody your opinion, you won't wreck it now. That's how you feel about it. And you can't take it back. Now, it's your opinion. It ain't going to change the fact that that's your opinion. But it has changed your relationship with that person for a period of time. And if the goal is to give God glory, then maybe we need to swallow some of our opinions and just let God be God. But you got to have him close. 
He got to be at you 24 7, 7, 365. That's for us. Because when we get to heaven, we, he's there all the time. But in time, 24 7, 365, God, what to do now? God, what to do tomorrow? God, what to do tonight? And if we can get our teenagers and young adults to start thinking, God, what do I need to do on my job? God, what do I need to do in this relationship? You, you, you're getting into new stuff. You've never been there before. And to go in on your own understanding is going in off of chaos and misunderstanding. God, what do I need to do? God, what do I need to say? God, how much should I get? God, how should I, much should I put back? God, how should I act? You've got to have Jesus close. In order to do what God say, you got to have Jesus close. And you got to have Jesus close in order to do what God say. That's how you can have a closer relationship with Jesus. Just take God's word at face value through the filling of the Holy Spirit and respond in the manner in which God wants you to respond. If God says it was wrong 2,013 years ago, it's wrong today. Amen. If it was right 2,013 years ago, it is still right today. One thing about God, and this is what is so good about our Lord, he is not a wishy-washy God. Amen. Amen. He don't, see, see, you ask me something one day, this would be my opinion. You ask me something tomorrow, my opinion may have changed. But if I base my opinions on his word, then I become a more stable person. Mm -hmm. Because I'm resting on the rock. Mm -hmm. This is how you get close to Jesus. By doing the will of God. And getting rid of your fleshly desires that are dictated and manipulated by the crowds in your life. That's how you get closer to God. Most gracious Father in heaven, 